What up? What up? Oh man, been long day today. Okay. Uh, can't be charismatic, but can be informational. Informational. So, Marcus Spears repaired my Hammond internal AO38 the internal amp for the A100 uh, that was really cool and the ramifications of that repair other than of course improving the internals amplification system of the A series that some of the purists of course don't like the internal amplification but Marcus and I agree if it's there why not use it uh, no need to trash uh, valuable uh, equipment that works right yeah, so that's been my philosophy I understand you know purists prefer to use just the Leslie and that's cool uh, but amazingly enough, tonight, and by the way, this is the A100, not the A105 that I played in the last video that's in my garage. Although, I was playing it through that lovely refrigerator Leslie in the background. Here, I got my 142 uh, right beside me. I'm not sure if the camera can see it, but this was the Leslie that the 105 was playing through. And it's mic'd up, and I had the mixer out in the garage. But today, Marcus repaired my amp. So I came back and put the amp in. So that means that the preamp and the main amp in this A100, the electrolytics have been replaced, and the few resistors that were bad. Uh, so both of those are in excellent shape again. And Marcus also rebuilt my 122 amp that I put in this 145. So all three amps have been... Uh, refreshed, almost rebuilt, um, and so that's all well and good, but the, the interesting connection with the internal amp for the A100 today, I got a great sound coming through the Leslie, right? So I got a kit, I got a 4H kit, so I can go back and forth between playing the console amplification or the Leslie or both at the same time. And I prefer to have them both going like a lot of guys in this group do. And one of the reasons being is that you have spring reverb, right? You got a dedicated tube amplifier in this uh, organ. So that would be my one last amplifier that could be the electrolytics could be replaced in it. I was looking at it a little bit tonight. But um, anyway, that spring reverb fires. And I find that to be really pleasing addition, especially in my den because it's carpeted and a couch and a chair that are upholstered, uh, which makes it pretty dry. I'd like to pull the carpet up. There's hard wood underneath, and that would really liven up the acoustics in here. It's pine paneling, but it would be great. But so at the moment, it's a little bit dry, so the reverb really adds. And having the reverb speaker coming out down here at the feet of the player doesn't make any sense. Um, so I did a little modification so that you can plug in uh, any speaker that you want, right? You just put a jack on the amp, send to the speaker, a female. And so I run the reverb over here to the top of the Leslie and run it in ensemble position so that the reverb comes out here and mixes with the Leslie, which is dry, and that to me is a very pleasing combination. And at the same time, you're getting the internal amplification of the A100, which is that internal amp has a bass boost, so it blows some of the pedals back at your feet. Uh, that's a really nice combination. So I've had that going on for a couple of years. No big deal. Well, so today, Having the internal amp repaired, well, I have an OBL2-2 uh, output box from Trek 2. And I put it on, I said, because it'd be nice to hear what the direct level sound from the tone generator is. It would, you know, you have that option, an out, a direct out. But it was uh, 
It didn't sound good, obviously, because it takes its signal from the speakers, and that internal amp uh, needed to be worked on. The electrolytics needed to be replaced, and it had some hum in it, just like the preamp had hum in it. So getting the internal amp repaired meant that I could hook this OBL2-2 up to the organ again, which I did tonight after I put the internal amp back in again, which is what the AO38 or 39, I can't remember, 39, I think. Uh, so I spent a good hour and a half putting the OBL2-2 back on the organ and reading Mike Smokowitz <laughs> instructions in an email uh, the blue wire goes here, and the green wire goes here, and the black wire goes here on the rightmost speaker of the leftmost terminal speaker of the reverb of the blah, 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 blah. So I've been through this before and followed those instructions, and it didn't work. Also, a number of people on this group uh, had the same experience. So you got to swap the wires. So for whatever the reason is, what they say, how you hook up the blue and the green, in fact, on the A100, it, it's the opposite of that. So no big deal. Um, so I ended up putting, you have a green, a blue, and a black. Black is ground, and the ground you can get from anywhere because it's all connected together. The internal amp, the preamp, the reverb amp, the, the ground wire, the brown, connects them all. So it's continuous, so it doesn't matter where you get that ground. And it's the same as the, it's the speaker terminal's ground, so it's all ground, right? So it doesn't have to be on the speaker terminal. So I ended up putting it on the ground terminal of the amp. And also, you, you're taking the speaker-level signal. So you want one from one of your main speakers, and you want one from your reverb amp speaker, and that's going to feed the OBL2-2. And you have a button on the box that will adjust the amount of reverb. So I went through all that. Hooked it up his way, it didn't work. Hooked it up my way, it works just fine. Soldered all that up, tidied it all up, put the back back on the organ again, and then spent some time setting the level for the output box. So I have a Mackie mixer. This is a 1402 sitting right here. Uh, I bought a used one before. I had it sitting over here on this table, and it turns out that it was a dud. It had been sitting for so long, and it was old that the pots were crackly, and man, I, I it just wasn't worth the $160 I paid for it. So I sent it back to the guy and got a refund, and I bought this one instead, and this is a pre-2000 Mackie. So that meant that it's made in America in the plant in Washington, not in China. And this one was $50 cheaper than the other one, and it works great. No scratchy pots, so I'm mixing my Leslie Mike's two Sure SM58s, but the pop screen is taken off, so they're just like 57s mounted at um, 45 degrees, and I know a lot of guys only want one amp on the top, one mic on the top, and I get it, So, but I like this. So two on the top rotor at 45 degrees with a shock mount, air mounts, so no vibration is going to get into the mics. And then a, a Samson CO1 condenser uh, mounted down on the bottom of the Leslie uh, in a spout spider shock mount also. So that's three mics, and I got them right here in channels one, two, three, mixed. And I have the top rotor mics panned hard right and left. Uh, and then the condenser mic, obviously, because it's very sensitive for the bass, your, the volume level is down some. And then, again, the cool thing that happened is with getting the OBL2 hooked up again because the amp is clean now means that the signal coming out of the direct line out now is clean and free of hum, which it wasn't before. It had tons of hum in it, so I couldn't use it. So now it's clean. And so you got your mixer here, which I'm driving the audio interface, you know, to make these videos. Well, heck, just take your output of the OBL2, your quarter inch out, plug it into your mixer along with your Leslie. And so you got the direct line out and you can mix that in with the signal from the Leslie, which is what some guys do also. They add a little direct tone generator mixed in. Well, I've never done that before. So today was when all of this came together. Really cool, man. Uh, so the reverb 
is coming through the OBL 2-2 because it specifically is meant to capture the reverb signal and mix it with the direct line out. And I run the reverb out of this speaker, which comes out on top of the Leslie and spills into the upper rotor mics. So it's a really cool setup, man. Everything is going for the first time, uh, and it sounds really, really hip. So... Um, this is the A100, not the 105. And the 105 that I did the last video in the garage is a good organ. It's a red cap. It's got red Mylar caps. And probably is in better, newer shape than this one. This is a 1962. Uh, but, of course, now I recap the tone generator on this organ, not the 105. So that would be the difference of what you're hearing is a recap tone generator the same Leslie's that I, that, I, that I use for the other one, but now I got a direct line out that I can mix in with the organ signal. Uh, and that's what has all come together, which is really cool. So here is the A100, and the preamp and the main amp and the Leslie amp have all been recapped, electrolytics. And, of course, you know what that sounds like from the A105. <laughs> I'm leaving my vocal mic on, so it's going to pick up a little bit. I'll turn it off. So this is just Leslie with no reverb. That sounds great, but it's it's dry, and this room is dry, so reverb is a wonderful thing. So the way that you get that without having to add digital reverb to your mixer, which is certainly possible to do that, well, I have a tube reverb amp in this organ and a spring reverb, right? So when I use the internals, it's driving the reverb, right? And so you you put a plug on there so that you can put your speaker wherever you want. Now, of course, when you put it in your, your MME in the middle position, which is ensemble, you're going to get both 12s in the organ, and you're going to get reverb, which will be added. That's where you're going to hear that as you play. But um, the way that I had it set up, the miking is going to come from the Leslie, but it's going to get some of the reverb, right? So uh, that's like this. So the position switches in ensemble and see how the reverb spills into the Leslie uh, a fair amount <laughs> Sorry, I lied. So the uh, direct signal out from the uh, OBL2 was turned on, so now it's off. So this is just Leslie only, three mics. is is because the Leslie is so close to me in the den because we have limited space it's man three feet from me so to get the signal into the mics to be right you need to play the organ you know the pedal at least half if not three quarters to drive its amp to drive the Leslie amp to drive the microphones which is you're sitting right beside it here and it's one o'clock in the morning that's a little bit loud <laughs> These to 
be about there. Which is why I got the headphones on, so when you get to push the pedal down to drive the signal, you'll start to hear it coming through the headphones, as opposed to just hearing it acoustically, because I got all this sound, two speakers here, and a speaker and a rotor, so of course, even with the headphones on, you can sh certainly feel and hear the sound of the organ. But if you want to record... You need to 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 monitor your recording bus, right? So you're balancing out how it sounds acoustically to you in the room, so that you can play well, but also what it sounds like going into the board through the cans, right? So that's Leslie only, and then I put it in the ensemble position, which is going to add a reverb coming through this speaker, right? Tonight sounds really strong. I usually play it on seven uh, with the first draw bar. Okay, so that's all well and good. I had that together for the most part. Uh, three mics, a reverb coming in, you know. Uh, so what is added to the stew? What's added to the stew is the OBL 2-2. The direct line out, which on the A100, I tried it tonight on coming off of the preamp. So that OBL2-2 made specifically to harvest a reverb signal. You can also use it for a B3 and just take it right off of the GG terminals. Uh, and I didn't know this, and so Smokowitz called me up and he said, Yeah, you just wire the green and the blue together and put them on the red G terminal and take the black and run that to your brown ground wire, and it'll function just like the normal uh, line out off of a B3. But interesting that it's meant it has a pot on that box that's pretty big uh, range. And he said that will allow, it'll take either signal. It can take it right off of the tone, uh, the preamp, or it can take it off of the internal amp which is the speakers, and so that's what it was meant to do so that you can harvest the reverb. So I tried taking it off of the preamp, and it sounded okay, but it didn't sound like peachy to me. So I said, okay, well, let me go ahead and spend some time. And I hooked it up to the speaker level signal, and so, of course, that amp that Marcus rebuilt, it has a bass boost on it so that the internal speakers have a little more bottom end for your pedals. So that's the signal that you're going to get through your direct line out is coming off of the internal amp, not the preamp. And it's different. It has more bass, and of course it has the reverb. Well, man, this sounds really great. And so yeah, I'll let you hear it. So this is a, the ensemble MME switch on main only. I'm going to mute my Leslie mics. And I'm going to turn on the OBL 2-2. And this is what it sounds like. Thank you. 
is some funky ass shit that's going on right there. So, the, how I got the drawbars pulled out, B flat is playing F on the bottom keyboard. You got too much fifth in there, right? There's your fundamental. that that was only the direct line out so the cherry of the whole night is to run in ensemble mode with the leslie and the console both going turn all my mics on right here so i got the leslie and the organ playing so the reverb's coming out and now i'm going to blend in some of that direct line out from the trek 2 obl 2-2 so here's without it. And here is with it. And that sounds good. Sounds bass heavy tonight. That's because Amtrak is going to be pulling up in about 10 minutes. The Amtrak train comes in at 1.25 a.m. in Vietnam. certainly adds uh, something to the sound right of the what the sound is coming out of the Leslie and here again I haven't even tried what would be the point of putting a mic 
on the 212s within the A100 itself so that you would really have all of the bases covered, right, in terms of uh, recording your Hammond. Anyway, that's called Miking Your Hammond. Peace out, Goonies. <laughs>